In this lesson on protein structure from Chapter 4, we will like to look at mass spectroscopy. This is a method of protein identification used to determine primary structure. In a previous video lesson, we saw that Edmonds sequencing was a chemical means of determined primary structure, that is the sequence of amino acids within a peptide or protein. In this case, we're going to use more of a physical method, as we'll see. The molecule is first sprayed through a capillary tube, and that enables it to form gas phase ions. In the illustration at the bottom of our slide here, here's our protein as this green sphere. We're going to spray it through a capillary tube, and that gives us these gas phase ions. Our first instrument, MS1, sorts the ions so that only one emerges. So we only have one selected that we're going to analyze each time. This selected peptide is then sent through a collision chamber so that it's bombarded by an inert gas and that fragments in, into different fragments of ions. They tend to break at the peptide bonds and so each of these fragments differs by the number of amino acids present. From the collision chamber, these fragmented ions are then sent through our second instrument, MS2, and that measures the charge to mass ratio of the pieces, and we get a mass analysis. So again, we have different fragments corresponding to the presence of the different amino acids. So each of these fragments is going to differ by a single amino acid. And we'll see how that works to help us to determine the sequence. It's important to keep in mind here, this represents a physical breakage of the peptide, and that allows us to detect any modifications to the protein. Remember with Edmund sequencing, we had to have a free amine terminus, and it had to be deprotonated in order to carry out that analysis. In this case, the peptide can be modified in any way, and because it's a physical breakage, we can still analyze it. What we get then from computer analysis is a printout that would look something like this at the bottom of the slide here. The instrument measures the charge to mass ratio and we're going to determine the sequence by comparing the masses of increasingly larger fragments that differ by one amino acid. So the difference in mass of successive peaks identifies each of the residues. Let's see how that works. In our illustration here, the charge to mass ratio, or mass, is on our x-axis, increasing from left to right, so our smallest fragments are on the left and our largest are on the right. On the y-axis we have the counts, that is the prevalence of those fragments. We're going to do this a number of times and we're going to get an averaging of the fragments that we see. Our first fragment, our smallest one, would correspond to a single amino acid. We measure that mass and we find 71.2 and since we know the mass of the individual amino acids, we know that corresponds to the amino acid alanine. Now we know that the first amino acid on a peptide is alanine. The second largest fragment would contain two amino acids. We take the mass of that fragment subtract from it the mass of alanine that we already know, 71.2, and that difference is 97. That corresponds to the amino acid proline. Now we know that the sequence of our peptide is alanine proline. And so, in a similar way, we can analyze each of the successively larger fragments to determine what's the next amino acid within the sequence. So here we have two ways of determining the primary structure, one a chemical method, that's Edmund sequencing, and the second a physical method, mass spectroscopy. So just keep in mind the differences between these two methods. This concludes our studies in Chapter 4. We'll begin our studies in Chapter 5 with our next video lesson, where we'll consider the prosthetic group that is at the core of oxygen binding proteins. And we also want to consider how the group is bound within these proteins.